In this problem, we're told that function f is defined as the following. It's a piecewise function, and when x is between 0 and 3, function f is defined as k times the square root of x plus 1. And when x is from 3 to 5, function f is mx plus 2. So you can get a mental picture of this. This function only exists in the first quadrant, and it's some constant times some sort of square root function here. So it's probably going to look something like this up to the point x equals 3. And then beyond that, it's a line, mx plus 2, some certain slope. Now, we have to find these values, k and m, such that this function here is differentiable at this point, x equals 3, right there. Now in order to be differentiable, first it has to be continuous. This function has to go through this point without a break or a gap right there. And then second of all, it has to be smooth. As we get close to 3 on the x-axis, the slope on the left side has to equal the slope on the right side. Those slopes have to be the same right at that point in order for it to be smooth. If the slopes are different from one side and the other, we get a little cusp right there. You can see it in the extreme case. If the slope is different from one side and the other, we get a cusp. Even if they're only a little bit different, we would have a cusp. So here's how we set up the problem. We say the function has to be continuous at x equals 3. And in order for it to be continuous, this function over here on the left side has to have the same value as this function over here on the right side when x equals 3 at that point. So I'll write that. For it to be continuous, k times the square root of x plus 1 has to equal mx plus 2 when x equals 3. So we just need to plug in the value 3 for x right there and see what we get. So this is k times the square root of 3 plus 1 is 4 equals m times 3 plus 2, and I'll just rewrite that a little bit. Uh, this is 2k equals 3m plus 2. Now clearly I can't solve this because I have one equation right here and two variables. But I can get another equation from the fact that it's differentiable at x equals 3. And remember we said that for it to be differentiable it has to be smooth. That means the slope has to be the same from each side. Well the slope on the left will be the derivative of this and the slope on the right will be the derivative of that and those derivatives have to be equal right at that point when x is equal to 3 so I'll write that I'll say the derivative of this which just means the slope of this piece the derivative of this has to equal the derivative of that when x equals 3 so let's write it exactly like that the derivative of k times the square root of x plus 1 has to equal the derivative of mx plus 2 when x equals 3. And we can take the derivatives here. The derivative of kx plus 1, the k just comes out front, and this is the derivative of x plus 1 to the 1 half. Now it turns out we can apply the power rule here and we'll talk about situations like this where we have a function raised to a power. That's coming up in the next section. But for now let me tell you that the derivative here works out to k times 1 half x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. And we'll learn more about how to deal with more complicated functions on the inside of a, of a parentheses something raised to a power. Well up here a function raised to a power. We'll be doing that real soon. But for now this is the derivative of the left side. And that has to equal the derivative of the right side. And the derivative of the right side is just m. The derivative of this first term here is m and the derivative of the second term is 0. So let's rewrite this left side in a little bit more understandable form. The k is in the numerator, and then we have 2 times the square root of x plus 1.
and that's going to equal m, and that's going to be the case when x equals 3. So let's plug in x equals 3, and this becomes a square root of 4, which is just 2, and multiplied by that 2 gives us a 4 in the denominator. So we get k over 4 equals m. Or k is equal to 4m. Now let's take that and substitute it back into this equation. And so I'm going to write 2 times k right here, but instead of k, I'm going to write 4m. So 2 times 4m equals 3m plus 2. And now we're down to an Algebra 1 problem. We can solve this. This is 8m equals 3m plus 2. Or in other words, uh, 5m equals 2. So m is equal to 2 fifths. And we know that k is equal to 4m. So k is equal to 8 fifths. And those are your answers. M is 2 fifths and K is 8 fifths. So those are the values for M and K, which will make that function continuous and differentiable at that point.